If you were to close your eyes and just listen to the sounds, could you identify the movie and where we are in the movie? Everything is just so iconic. Even just hearing that, you're like, oh, that's Star Wars. That's totally Star Wars. This is uh, The Mandalorian season two. So here we have singularly these sounds making up the sound of the Razor Crest coming in. And here, uh, <laughs> such a nerd. There's like a, what I think is a very hilarious metal wobble sound that I will try and put in everything I ever work on because I think it's incredible. <laughs> Here it goes. We see this this metal kind of debris kind of spin off. <laughs> it's funny, right? <laughs> You'll find that also on the speeder chase on crate in uh, the Last Jedi when Poe puts his foot through the speeder. <laughs> you can't unhear it. There's this little pool you enter when you work on the, the Star Wars projects and you're kind of given the key, you have access to the Star Wars library, which is maybe one of the best things ever. It felt slightly nerve-wracking getting access to all the Star Wars sounds because it did feel like breaking into a vault. The TIE explosion is cool. I mean, I think it's every little girl's dream to go make Star Wars sounds. <laughs> I mean, Skywalker sound is full of sound geniuses who have made the most ridiculously iconic sounds that exist. And you walk down the hallways and those people are just bobbing around with some coffee, getting on with their business. Mr. Coffee. Care for some? I often tell people, hey, I worked on uh, Saving Private Ryan and Toy Story and uh, Jurassic Park and Spaceballs. They go, oh, Spaceballs? <laughs> Gary Rystrom is kicking around in his room. And then Ben Burt is just around the corner there. He's like, yeah, this is how I made R2-D2. And then he's like, this is how I made a lightsaber. Like it's nothing, but it's like everything. He just created the sounds of an entire galaxy. Here, it is a building full of people just dedicated to sound. You know, and it's all under one roof. Yeah, I often say I was here at Skywalker Ranch before there was a here. Well, let's search for a familiar Star Wars sound. And that's a metal shear that I recorded for The Empire Strikes Back, and it's the main sound component of the, the Imperial Walkers, the At-Ats. Before Star Wars, the sound style was fairly synthetic. George Lucas despised that idea. He wanted science fiction films to sound like art. Ben? That is harder than it sounds. No! Bang, bang, bang! Well, we have to think of another way. George had this idea in mind that he called the used future. He wanted everything to sound like it had been used a lot in the real world. It had to feel believable and naturalistic and more or less organic and relatable, but it had this kind of exotic feeling as well that helped you buy that it was happening in a galaxy far, far away.
my very first job here when I was like 22 years old, hot out of college, it was a sound effects librarian. And it was like this really amazing title, right? And I was like, what is this? The sound effects librarian would take all these cool sounds from all the shows. They listen to every single sound and type out the description to recall that sound. I could start with R2, see what we got there. The description is R2-D2, like tones, musical, cute. And here's a sad R2-D2, like sad beeps. So maybe frowning. So these droids have emotion. I mean, a lot of us just grew up on Star Wars and that's definitely kind of central to our legacy. But we work on close to 200 projects a year. As I open this up today, it looks like there's a little over 720,000 sounds in our Skywalker <laughs> sound effects library, which is insane. We have the Tron motorcycles. As creative people, you don't want technology to slow you down. When you have a thought and you really got to get it out there on, on a blank canvas like this, you really need fast tools to actually give you the results as fast as you think. And without SoundMiner, without Pro Tools and that interconnect and without Mac, there would be no fast iteration of creativity. So this is the central machine room. Oh, the central machine room is basically the brain of all the stage operations here at Skywalker. These boxes up here actually help synchronize all these Macs together so that when they're playing the movie on the stage, all these machines are all playing at the same exact time. So there's really long cables from here to the actual edit bay in the stage. So the editors, when they're working, they're actually controlling the computer here in, in the central machine room. Name that tune. The second movie I ever worked on here was Jurassic Park. There hadn't been a dinosaur sound in a movie that sounded like that prior to Jurassic Park. Did, did everybody get a little tingle? Uh, huh? Did that do something? <laughs> sound designers actually create sounds from nothing. They're just, they're playing. They're playing, they're having fun. They're going out and recording the most weird things that you could think of. And they take those raw sounds and, and manipulate them and bend them and break them and turn them upside down and see what they get. My Uncle Kevin gave this to me in my stocking. And uh, I was like, okay, what's this? I'm gonna go ahead and start a session. We are recording, so now. Here's what we got. Oh. So, you can hear that, but let's, let's go a little spaceshipy with it. And let's take it down 10, Semitones. That's kind of cool, huh? These are, are, are TIE Fighter-like ships, so I wanted to, something that kind of sounded like the TIE Fighter, but, you know, obviously steering clear. So these are some elements. That was awesome. So this is just titled uh, Space Shriek. So that's like that. And then freezing it so that it loops. And then, oh, here you go. There's a, the cougar, the cat. Those are all the elements that make up this sound. This doesn't make any sense, but that's what we do. <laughs> we don't make sense sometimes. That is a stormtrooper. 
And then here's something we use for a body. There's sand in here and we just, we use this for. Here is a Foley stage. Um, someone described it to me once as uh, a magician's shop mixed with a thrift store and a mini golf course. And I think that is pretty accurate. That one's a good one. Nice. I like that one. Creating is part of why I do this is because it's fun to do that. I like doing that because there's a bit of alchemy to what we do. And it takes you to a whole different place. I mean, there's a certain, there's an element to what I do that is completely unrealistic. And that's kind of the fun part of sound design is that the real sound is oftentimes not the sound that you're using. That's a great creature sweetener. For these artists and mixers and designers and editors out here, not playing by the rules just means to me that you're, you're just open for, to possibilities. Everybody in every department is a storyteller who's trying to bring their part to the whole. And, and when we're on the mix stage, and you can see that final mix and kind of all these elements coming together when they cross that finish line. It's just magic. The most exciting part of the creative process is that of discovery, of discovering some idea or coming up with something out of all the material you have, which is really what the mixing is about. This is from episode three, Revenge of the Sith. So this is the Order 66 Thank you, Cody. Now let's get a move on. We've got a battle to win here. Oh, yes, sir. Now let's play that same section just with the dialogue. Very good, sir. Oh, by the way, I think you'll be needing this. Thank you, Cody. Now let's get a move on. We've got a battle to win here. Ha! So let's look at the foley. Anakin and the stormtroopers, and you hear not only their feet, but the stormtroopers' movement, and you hear their footsteps, and the footsteps, and there'll be gun handling, and body falls. So then the sound effects, I'll play the sound effects for that scene without the foley. You'll hear spaceships, explosions, and stuff, shots like that. And this is representative of, of a thousand tracks that make all this stuff up individually. So then, the whole section, when we play it all together, it'll sound like this. You get into the mix and things start canceling each other out because there's just too much material. So in that scene, we started to simplify that, strip it down and make everything muted. it became the fact that the course of things were changing. Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? It becomes more emotional. It still gives me a <laughs> chill when I see that kid sort of stumble back a little bit, but... Uh... There are all these tiny little story details everywhere that, you know, the sound can keep things like really alive, but there's a bigger picture and there are like fun moments and emotive moments, there are loud moments, there are silent moments. There are all those moments that, that are just out of the box. And you've got to be brave, you've got to be brave if you're doing something like that, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. One of the things that makes sound particularly powerful is that it sneaks in the side door to your brain. And by that I mean it affects you without you really knowing that it's affecting you. I can hear the bees buzzing and the birds. Sound is a universal language changes people's emotions and people um, understand sound directly. 
The Skywalker legacy is not necessarily the scripts and the films, and although they're always fun to watch, but it's the idea of bringing something brand new, something otherworldly, and creating something entirely unique and entirely inspiring out of thin air. And I think that's kind of what we bring to the table. It's the things you take for granted. It's the things that you don't really pay attention to. That's what I do. Sound folks, you know, we're, we're like tucked away in the background. No one ever sees us. But if you strip away the lightsabers, Darth Vader's breathing, R2-D2's synth chirps, you don't have any defining characters in pop culture. But as soon as you add those sounds back in, Right, no one will ever know. And I love that. <laughs>